Hi, welcome to Knitting Help. My name is Amy Finley, and it's my pleasure to teach you how to knit today. I'm just going to do a small demo project, a little rectangle, which will have all of the steps that you need, whether you want to knit a scarf, a felted purse, or pot holder, felted pot holder or coaster. Um, just cast on, if you're doing a felted project, make sure you choose 100% wool, non-washable, non-machine washable yarn. So to begin, um, knitting begins with a cast on. I like to teach long tail cast on. Knitting on is another method you might like. Um, you can find other methods, a whole host of methods for cast on and other stitch techniques on our website, knittinghelp.com or on our app, the Knitting Help Knitting app. So long tail cast on. For a long tail, you need a long tail. I like to leave um, about a foot of yarn for 20 stitches. Um, it can vary depending on how tightly you do it. So maybe give a little extra. So I'm just gonna do a little project here. So I dangle the tail over my thumb and the working yarn over my index finger, grasp them. and insert the needle to begin. And, and actually, I'm just gonna point out, I'm using a circular needle. You can use straight needle or whatever for a flat rectangular project like we're doing. But you can also use a circular needle, which um, I tend to prefer. And if you're going to buy one pair of needles, get a circular and then you can do a hat as your next project, like a 16 inch circular. Or this, these needles are the ones we sell, the, um, Denise interchangeable needles and they come in different you can attach different cable lengths for different size projects so I'm actually going to pop this off and just cast on on the single needle so it's not rattling about okay so tail over the thumb and working yarn over the index finger grasp them now insert your needle into the strand the top between the thumb and index finger and just pull down to begin. So now for long tail, cast on, go up into that thumb stitch. Notice I jumped over this working yarn. I didn't duck under it. Over the working yarn and up into the thumb loop, then over the index finger yarn you're grabbing it and pulling it through the thumb loop here. Release the thumb from the loop, and then you can use the thumb to help tighten this whole thing up. So that, so just ducking under the yarn to begin gave me that first stitch on the needle, and I've just done one cast on stitch to make two. So pull down again, and we are in our repeated pattern here. Just again over, this yarn, then duck under the thumb loop, over the index finger, pull it through, release and tighten. So we're going to cast on however many stitches you need for your project. You might do 30 stitches, for instance, for you know, a small felted project or a scarf. I'm just using worsted weight yarn, kind of a heavy worsted weight in this case, which means you might use a bulky yarn if you want a really fast project as a beginner. Um, a worsted weight yarn is a certain thickness, a bulky weight is thicker. Uh, worsted weight yarns usually will say on the, they'll say on the yarn label seven or eight, US size seven or eight needles. Um, or f which is, I believe, four and a half or five millimeter for European knitters. Okay, so we've got a few stitches here. I'm gonna pop my needle back on. 
my cable. Okay. So we've cast on, on the stitches on my right hand. I'm now going to switch that needle into my left hand and grab the empty right needle in my right hand to begin knitting. And I like to line up the cast on edge to the right. It positions it well to get it into the stitch. So to knit the first stitch, um, I guess I'll just leave this yarn dangling, but if you want to, you can knit it along with the working yarn as if they were one strand for a few stitches and then that will weave it in so you can cut it off. I'm just gonna leave it so it doesn't confuse things. So you can see what we're doing here. Okay, so up, I'm bringing the needle up into the first stitch, putting it behind the shaft of the left hand needle. We're doing the knit stitch. Knitting consists of knit stitches and purl stitches. So the basic knit stitch. Just going, wrapping this yarn between the two needles, sort of in a counterclockwise direction if I'm looking down on the needles. And then pulling that strand through the stitch. This is sort of tricky. You have tends to help to angle the needle down a little bit. And then, and then we're sliding this stitch we've just worked into off of the left needle. And that's our first knit stitch. Do it again, a little bit closer. So up into this strand getting the needle behind the shaft of the left needle, wrapping around, peeking through, and off jumps the old stitch. So I'm doing English knitting right now, which is the most common. It's also known as American knitting, actually, often called, most commonly called English knitting, where I'm holding the yarn in the right and I have to somehow really get that yarn between the two needles to work the stitch. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like in the other hand, which is the way um, I currently knit. And I'll do most of this video in this hand because it's how I naturally hold it. Uh, at some point you'll want to develop a yarn holding tensioning system, I guess, so that you're not letting go of the yarn, picking it up every time. No rush, but it's easier for continental knitters if you do it first thing. I, I like to come duck behind the yarn with my pinky, wrap it around once, and then duck my index finger under the strand. And that is just a way of holding the yarn that will feed the yarn to, to my knitting at a convenient tension and won't be hopefully too tight or too loose that I lose control. Okay, so having a yarn hold that comes up where the yarn ends by coming over my index finger is kind of the key thing with continental knitting. So now again, I'm just doing the same thing really. I'm going up into that stitch, behind that behind the shaft of this needle. And this time, instead of having to bring the yarn up between the needles, I'm just gonna take this, I'm just doing what's called picking. I'm picking the, the yarn with this right needle and pulling it through this, the loop, pulling it through the stitch and off the needle. Again, up into the stitch, behind the working yarn and somehow fetching it through. You can, there's lots of ways of doing this. You'll find a natural rhythm here. My typical way is, employs my middle finger, I'm just going up into the stitch and then I sort of swipe around my middle finger to fetch that yarn through. Whatever works for you.
So that's the knit stitch. So play around with this. So you can do as many rows of knitting as you like. Uh, if your felted project is kind of nice in that you can fiddle back and forth, knit stitch here, purl stitch there, do any kind of thing you want. And in the end, you won't really see the pattern of the stitch pattern all that much or any mistakes for that matter. Um, so with our 100% wool yarn, we are, we could do that. 100% wool or alpaca wool felt too. Okay, so now I'm switching that needle to my left hand and grabbing the empty right hand needle again, orienting my, sti my stitches to the right to get into that stitch more easily. And now I can begin knitting the next row. And before, and as I begin the next row, I just want to make one tip, which is that the first stitch on your row on your knitting is going to want to be very loose and sloppy. That's just how it is in knitting. The, the end stitches will be raggedy and longer and you'll go, what am I doing wrong? So to avoid that, you can either intentionally work tight, very tightly that first stitch, um, or a common thing to do is just what's called slipping the first stitch of the row. And I'll show you what that Wrong is. Wrong here. You're just gonna go into the stitch and just slide it off without knitting it. I've slipped the first stitch. Okay, so now knitting into the next stitch. Okay, so either English style, and I'll show you that same yarn hold, that tensioning hold in English. Come under the, with the pinky, wrap around, duck under with the index finger, and you have a nice carrying technique for the yarn in your right hand. And if you're a much more clever English knitter than I, um, you can do it without letting go of the right needle if you like. Something like that. Okay, and again in the left hand, continental. These are creating the same stitches. Feel free to play around back and forth. It's not going to affect any knitting project, whether you're switching continental. Really all you're doing is coming from into the front of the stitch to pull your loop through and making and um, that's the knit stitch. And if it comes, if you end up somehow wrapping the yarn the other way around, it'll twist it so that the loop, front loop is um, on the left side a bit. And that, that's not what we want to do. But otherwise, as long as you're fetching from the front of the knitting, getting that, grabbing the yarn from the front and pulling it through, then that's the knit stitch. And really, however you want to do it is fine. Okay, so now let's talk about the purl stitch. The purl stitch is reaching into the stitch from the back of the knitting and pulling a strand through. And so to do it from the back of the knitting, you wanna go down into that front, that same loop. And I'll slip that first stitch for consistency. What the heck? Okay, so down into this first stitch and now I'm showing you continental purling first because it's in the strand is in my left hand. Um, it's I'll just let you know right now that that's it's harder. People find it typically harder to get the knack for and that's the one uh, you know if there's a downside to continental it's, it takes a little more dexterity or just and it doesn't work for everybody. So here we go. Let's try the purl stitch continental and I'll show you the easier English way. Down into that stitch. And then however you want to approach getting this yarn, pushing it down between the needles to, to facilitate basically pushing that strand back between out of the stitch, through the stitch that's on this 
needle and then off jumps the old stitch and we've done a purl so again get a little closer see what I'm doing so down into that strand putting the yarn over the front the front of the needle and then somehow getting it through this loop and I'll show you a few ways continental knitters might manage it you might have seen people go like this to kind of grab the loop or grab the yarn and then oh, I don't really do it let's see if I can do it maybe I'll use my thumb to help hold it in place ah. and then push it through the stitch so down into the stitch what I don't want or what I want you to be aware of if you're going to choose to do but I don't recommend it per se is the um, and the easy way of getting this yarn through the stitch continental style is actually to simply get in your needle over it that way and then it easily pops through but then you've got your um, stitch in a different orientation than is commonly used so it's so again here's the front loop on the needle is on the left side if you stretch it out relative to the back loop and that's what I'll just call a twisted stitch I'll leave that on the needle so we can come to it later and see what it looks like okay so so that's continental knitting or purling and now I'll show you English purling which is um, easier to manipulate um, however it is in a, one respect slower and you'll see what I mean in a moment so you know it, it, they've all got their pro, both methods have their pros and cons and followers okay so um, the thing I may not have pointed out and I'm going to point out very clearly now is the working yarn needs to be in the front of the knitting when you're doing the purl stitch and it needs to be in the back of the knitting when you're doing the knit stitch. I think we sort of just started out that way at the beginning of the row and hopefully you followed along. But here in the middle of a row, it's more evident. If it's, so anyway, here we go. So in the front of the knitting, I'm going down into the stitch. I'm going to go in a counterclockwise manner if I'm looking down on the needle to wrap the yarn and push it back through. See how easy that was? We do like our easy English knitting. Wrap it, pop it through. So knitting is really just pulling loop, a loop through another loop in various ways, however you manage it. So, yeah, here we go. I'll just do a few more of these. So we've done a purl row. And the stitches will be the same again, whether you've done them continental or English, unless you did that one combined stitch, combined purling stitch, which oriented stitch differently. Did I leave it on there? I thought I did. Oh, there it is. I believe. Okay. It's more evident when we come to it. Okay. 